Cape Verde. Cape Verde is an island country spanning an archipelago of 10 volcanic islands in the central Atlantic Ocean. It forms part of the Macronesia ecoregion, along with the Azores, Canary Islands, Madeira, and the Savage Isles. Located 570 kilometers 350 miles west of the Cape Verde Peninsula off the coast of northwest Africa, the islands cover a combined area of slightly over 4,000 square kilometers 1,500 square miles. The Cape Verde archipelago was uninhabited until the 15th century, when Portuguese explorers discovered and colonized the islands, establishing the first European settlement in the tropics. Ideally located for the Atlantic slave trade, the islands grew prosperous throughout the 16th and 17th centuries, attracting merchants, privateers, and pirates. The end of transatlantic slavery in the 19th century led to economic decline and emigration. Cape Verde gradually recovered as an important commercial center and stopover for shipping routes. Incorporated as an overseas department of Portugal in 1951, the islands continued to campaign for independence, which was achieved in 1975. Since the early 1990s, Cape Verde has been a stable representative democracy, and remains one of the most developed and democratic countries in Africa. Lacking natural resources, its developing economy is mostly service-oriented, with a growing focus on tourism and foreign investment. Its population of around 540,000 is mostly of mixed European, Moorish, Arab and African heritage, and predominantly Roman Catholic, reflecting the legacy of Portuguese rule. A sizable diaspora community exists across the world, slightly outnumbering inhabitants on the islands. Historically, the name, Cape Verde, has been used in English for the archipelago and, since independence in 1975, for the country. In 2013, the Cape Verdean government determined that the Portuguese designation Cabo Verde would henceforth be used for official purposes, such as at the United Nations, even in English contexts. Cape Verde is a member of the African Union. Etymology of Cape Verde The country is named after the nearby Cap Verde Peninsula, on the Senegalese coast. In 1444, a few years before they discovered the islands, Portuguese explorers named that landmark Cabo Verde, Green Cape. On 24 October 2013, the country's delegation announced at the United Nations that the official name should no longer be translated into other languages. Instead of Cape Verde, the designation, Republic of Cabo Verde, is to be used. History of Cape Verde before the arrival of Europeans, the Cape Verde Islands were uninhabited. They were discovered by Genoese and Portuguese navigators around 1456. According to Portuguese official records, the first discoveries were made by Genoa-born Antonio de Noli, who was afterward appointed governor of Cape Verde by Portuguese King Afonso V. Other navigators mentioned as contributing to discoveries in the Cape Verde archipelago are Diogo Gomes, who was with Antonio de Noli and claimed to have been the first to land on and name Santiago Island, Diogo Dias, Diogo Afonso and the Italian, Venice-born, Alvice Catamosto. In 1462, Portuguese settlers arrived at Santiago and founded a settlement they called Ribeira Grande, now called Cidade Vela, Old City, to avoid being confused with the town of Ribeira Grande on the Santo Antão Island. Ribeira Grande was the first permanent European settlement in the tropics. In the 16th century, the archipelago prospered from the Atlantic slave trade. Pirates occasionally attacked the Portuguese settlements. Francis Drake, an English privateer, twice sacked the then capital Ribeira Grande in 1585 when it was a part of the Iberian Union. After a French attack in 1712, the town declined in importance relative to nearby Praia, which became the capital in 1770. Decline in the slave trade in the 19th century resulted in an economic crisis. Cape Verde's early prosperity slowly vanished. However, the island's position astride mid-Atlantic shipping lanes made Cape Verde an ideal location for resupplying ships. Because of its excellent harbor, the city of Mandelo, located on the island of São Vicente, became an important commercial center during the 19th century. Diplomat Edmund Roberts visited Cape Verde in 1832. Cape Verde was the first stop of Charles Darwin's voyage with HMS Beagle in 1832. 
With few natural resources and inadequate sustainable investment from the Portuguese, the citizens grew increasingly discontented with the colonial masters, who nevertheless refused to provide the local authorities with more autonomy. In 1951, Portugal changed Cape Verde's status from a colony to an overseas province in an attempt to blunt growing nationalism. In 1956, Amilcar Cabral and a group of fellow Cape Verdeans and Guineans organized, in Portuguese Guinea, the Clandestine African Party for the Independence of Guinea and Cape Verde PAIGC. It demanded improvement in economic, social and political conditions in Cape Verde and Portuguese Guinea and formed the basis of the two nations' independence movement. Moving its headquarters to Conakry, Guinea in 1960, the PAIGC began an armed rebellion against Portugal in 1961. Acts of sabotage eventually grew into a war in Portuguese Guinea that pitted 10,000 Soviet bloc-supported PAIGC soldiers against 35,000 Portuguese and African troops. By 1972, the PAIGC controlled much of Portuguese Guinea despite the presence of the Portuguese troops, but the organization did not attempt to disrupt Portuguese control in Cape Verde. Portuguese Guinea declared independence in 1973 and was granted de jure independence in 1974. A budding independence movement, originally led by Amilcar Cabral, assassinated in 1973, passed on to his half-brother Luis Cabral and culminated in independence for the archipelago in 1975. Politics in Cape Verde with few natural resources and inadequate sustainable investment from the Portuguese, the citizens grew increasingly discontented with the colonial masters, who nevertheless refused to provide the local authorities with more autonomy. In 1951, Portugal changed Cape Verde's status from a colony to an overseas province in an attempt to blunt growing nationalism. In 1956, Amilcar Cabral and a group of fellow Cape Verdeans and Guineans organized, in Portuguese Guinea, the Clandestine African Party for the Independence of Guinea and Cape Verde PAIGC. It demanded improvement in economic, social and political conditions in Cape Verde and Portuguese Guinea and formed the basis of the two nations' independence movement. Moving its headquarters to Conakry, Guinea in 1960, the PAIGC began an armed rebellion against Portugal in 1961. Acts of sabotage eventually grew into a war in Portuguese Guinea that pitted 10,000 Soviet bloc-supported PAIGC soldiers against 35,000 Portuguese and African troops. By 1972, the PAIGC controlled much of Portuguese Guinea despite the presence of the Portuguese troops, but the organization did not attempt to disrupt Portuguese control in Cape Verde. Portuguese Guinea declared independence in 1973 and was granted de jure independence in 1974. A budding independence movement, originally led by Amilcar Cabral, assassinated in 1973, passed on to his half-brother Luis Cabral and culminated in independence for the archipelago in 1975. Military of Cape Verde The military of Cape Verde consists of the National Guard and the Coast Guard, 0.7% of the country's GDP was spent on the military in 2005. Having fought their only war for independence against Portugal between 1974 and 1975, the efforts of the Cabo Verdean armed forces have now been turned to combating international drug trafficking. In 2007, together with the Cape Verdean police, they carried out Operation Flying Launch Opera Cow Lancha Vodora, a successful operation to put an end to a drug trafficking group that smuggled cocaine from Colombia to the Netherlands and Germany using the country as a reorder point. The operation took more than three years, being a secret operation during the first two years, and ended in 2010. Although located in Africa, Cape Verde has always had close relations with Europe. Because of this, some scholars argue that Cape Verde may be eligible to join the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe and NATO. The most recent engagement of the armed forces was the Monte Chota massacre that resulted in 11 deaths. Geography of Cape Verde the Cape Verde Archipelago is in the Atlantic Ocean, approximately 570 kilometers 350 miles off the western coast of the African continent, near Senegal, the Gambia, and Mauritania, and is part of the Macaronesia ecoregion. It lies between latitudes 14 degrees and 18 degrees north, and longitudes 22 degrees and 26 degrees west. 
The country is a horseshoe-shaped cluster of 10 islands, 9 inhabited, and 8 islets, that constitute an area of 4,033 square kilometers. The islands are spatially divided into two groups. The Barlavento Islands, Windward Islands, Santo Antao, São Vicente, Santa Luzia, São Nicolau, São, Boa Vista, and the Sotavento Islands, Leeward, Mayo, Santiago, Fogo, Brava. The largest island, both in size and population, is Santiago, which hosts the nation's capital, Praia, the principal urban agglomeration in the archipelago. Three of the Cape Verde Islands, Sal, Boa Vista and Mayo, are fairly flat, sandy, and dry, the others are generally rockier with more vegetation. Climate in Cape Verde Cape Verde's climate is milder than that of the African mainland, because the surrounding sea moderates temperatures on the islands and cold Atlantic currents produce an arid atmosphere around the archipelago. Conversely, the islands do not receive the upwellings cold streams, that affect the West African coast, so the air temperature is cooler than in Senegal, but the sea is warmer, because the orographic relief of some islands, such as Santiago with steep mountains, cover it with rich woods and luxuriant vegetation where the humid air condenses and soak the plants, rocks, soil, logs, moss, etc. On the higher islands and somewhat wetter islands, exclusively in mountainous areas, like Santo Antao Island, the climate is suitable for the development of dry monsoon forest, and laurel forest as this vegetation average daily high temperatures range from 26 degrees Celsius 79 degrees Fahrenheit in February to 31 degrees Celsius 87.8 degrees Fahrenheit in September. Cape Verde is part of the Sahelian arid belt, with nothing like the rainfall levels of nearby West Africa. It rains irregularly between August and October, with frequent brief heavy downpours. A desert is usually defined as terrain that receives less than 250 mm in, of annual rainfall. Sal's total of 145 mm in, confirms this classification. Most of the year's rain falls in September. Economy of Cape Verde Cape Verde's notable economic growth and improvement in living conditions despite a lack of natural resources has garnered international recognition, with other countries and international organizations often providing development aid. Since 2007, the UN has classified it as a developing nation rather than a least developed country. Cape Verde has few natural resources. Only five of the ten main islands Santiago, Santo Antao, São Nicolau, Fogo, and Brava normally support significant agricultural production, and over 90% of all food consumed in Cape Verde is imported. Mineral resources include salt, pozzolana, a volcanic rock used in cement production, and limestone. Its small number of wineries making Portuguese-style wines have traditionally focused on the domestic market, but have recently met with some international acclaim. A number of wine tours of Cape Verde's various microclimates began to be offered in spring 2010. The economy of Cape Verde is service-oriented, with commerce, transport, and public services accounting for more than 70% of GDP. Although nearly 35% of the population lives in rural areas, agriculture and fishing contribute only about 9% of GDP. Light manufacturing accounts for most of the remainder. Fish and shellfish are plentiful, and small quantities are exported. Cape Verde has cold storage and freezing facilities and fish processing plants in Mandelo, Praia, and Ansal. Expatriate Cape Verdeans contribute an amount estimated at about 20% of GDP to the domestic economy through remittances. In spite of having few natural resources and being semi-desert, the country boasts the highest living standards in the region, and has attracted thousands of immigrants of different nationalities. Since 1991, the government has pursued market-oriented economic policies, including an open welcome to foreign investors and a far-reaching privatization program. It established as top development priorities the promotion of a market economy and of the private sector, the development of tourism, light manufacturing industries, and fisheries, and the development of transport, communications, and energy facilities. From 1994 to 2000 about $407 million in foreign investments were made or planned, of which 58% were in tourism, 17% in industry, 4% in infrastructure, and 21% in fisheries and services. 
In 2011, on four islands a wind farm was built that supplies about 30% of the electricity of the country. It is one of the top countries for renewable energy. Between 2000 and 2009, real GDP increased on average by over 7% a year, well above the average for sub-Saharan countries and faster than most small island economies in the region. Strong economic performance was bolstered by one of the fastest-growing tourism industries in the world, as well as by substantial capital inflows that allowed Cape Verde to build up national currency reserves to the current 3.5 months of imports. Unemployment has been falling rapidly, and the country is on track to achieve most of the UN Millennium Development Goals, including having its 1990 poverty level. In 2007, Cape Verde joined the World Trade Organization WTO, and in 2008 the country graduated from Least Developed Country LDC, to Middle Income Country Mike, status. Cape Verde has significant cooperation with Portugal at every level of the economy, which has led it to link its currency first to the Portuguese Escudo and, in 1999, to the Euro. On 23 June 2008 Cape Verde became the 153rd member of the WTO. Cabral Avenue, one of the main symbols of Cape Verde's development in early January 2018, the government announced that the minimum wage would be raised to 13,000 Cape Verde Escudos 140 United States dollars or 130 euros per month, from 11,000 Cape Verde Escudos, which was effective in mid-January 2018. Development in Cape Verde the European Commission's total allocation for the period of 2008 to 2013 foreseen for Cape Verde to address poverty reduction, in particular in rural and paraben areas where women are heading the households, as well as good governance, amounts to 54.1 million euros. Tourist places in Cape Verde Cape Verde's strategic location at the crossroads of mid-Atlantic air and sea lanes has been enhanced by significant improvements at Mandelos Harbor, Porto Grande, and at Sal's and Praia's international airports. A new international airport was opened in Boa Vista in December 2007 and on the island of São Vicente the newest international airport, Cesaria Evra Airport, in Cape Verde was opened in late 2009. Ship repair facilities at Mandelo were opened in 1983. The major ports are Mandelo and Praia, but all other islands have smaller port facilities. In addition to the international airport on Sal, airports have been built on all of the inhabited islands. All but the airports on Brava and Santo Antão enjoy scheduled air service. The archipelago has 3,050 kilometers (1,895 miles) of roads, of which 1,010 kilometers (628 miles) are paved, most using cobblestone. The country's future economic prospects depend heavily on the maintenance of aid flows, the encouragement of tourism, remittances, outsourcing labor to neighboring African countries, and the momentum of the government's development program. Demographics in Cape Verde The official census recorded that Cape Verde had a population of 512,096 in 2013. A large proportion of Cape Verdeans live on the main island, Santiago. The Cape Verde archipelago was uninhabited when the Portuguese discovered it in 1456. The modern population of Cape Verde descends from the mixture of European settlers and African slaves who were brought to the islands to work on Portuguese plantations. Most Cape Verdeans are therefore mulattoes, also called mesticos in Portuguese. Another term is Creole, meaning those of mixed native-born African and native-born European descent. European input included Spaniards and Italian seamen who were granted land by the Portuguese Empire, followed by Portuguese settlers and exiles, as well as Portuguese Muslims ethnic Moors, and Portuguese Jews ethnic Sephardim. Both of these religious groups were victims of the Inquisition. Other immigrants came from places such as the Netherlands, France, Britain, the Arab countries, especially Lebanon and Morocco, China, especially from Macau, India, Indonesia, South America, and North America, including people of Portuguese and African descent, and were absorbed into the Mestico population. Cape Verde's population in the 21st century is mostly Creole, the capital city Praia accounts for a quarter of the country's population. 
Over 65% of the population in the archipelago live in urban centers, and the literacy rate is 89%, i.e., 93, 3% among men aged 15 and above and 84, 7% among women aged 15 and above, according to the 2017 National Statistics Bureau data. Many Cape Verdeans have since emigrated, mainly to the United States and Europe. A genetic study revealed that the ancestry of the population in Cape Verde is predominantly European in the male line and West African in the female line, counted together the percentage is 56% African and 44% European. The high degree of genetic and ethnic mixture of individuals is a result of centuries of migration. Languages in Cape Verde Cape Verde's official language is Portuguese. It is the language of instruction and government. It is also used in newspapers, television, and radio. Cape Verdean Creole is used colloquially and is the mother tongue of virtually all Cape Verdeans. The national constitution calls for the measures to give it parity with Portuguese. Cape Verdean Creole or Creolu is a dialect continuum of a Portuguese-based Creole. There is a substantial body of literature in Creole, especially in the Santiago Creole and the São Vicente Creole. Creole has been gaining prestige since the nation's independence from Portugal. The differences between the forms of the language within the islands have been a major obstacle in the way of standardization of the language. Some people have advocated the development of two standards, a North Barlavento standard, centered on the São Vicente Creole, and a South Sotavento standard, centered on the Santiago Creole. Manuel Vega, Ph.D., a linguist and Minister of Culture of Cape Verde, is the premier proponent of Creolu's officialization and standardization. Education in Cape Verde Although the Cape Verdean educational system is similar to the Portuguese system, over the years the local universities have been increasingly adopting the American educational system, for instance, all ten existing universities in the country offer four-year bachelor's degree programs as opposed to five-year bachelor's degree programs that existed before 2010. Cape Verde has the second-best educational system in Africa, after South Africa. Primary school education in Cape Verde is mandatory and free for children between the ages of 6 and 14 years. In 2011, the net enrollment ratio for primary school was 85%. Approximately 90% of the total population over 15 years of age is literate, and roughly 25% of the population holds a college degree. A significant number of these college graduates hold doctorate degrees in different academic fields. Textbooks have been made available to 90% of school children, and 98% of the teachers have attended in-service teacher training. Although most children have access to education, some problems remain. For example, there is insufficient spending on school materials, lunches, and books. As of October 2016, there were 69 secondary schools throughout the archipelago, including 19 private secondary schools, and at least 10 universities in the country which are based on the two islands of Santiago and São Vicente. In 2015, 23% of the Cape Verdean population had either attended or graduated from secondary schools. When it came to higher education, 9% of Cape Verdean men and 8% of Cape Verdean women held a bachelor's degree or had attended universities. The overall college education rate, i.e., college graduates and undergraduate students, in Cape Verde is about 24%, in relation to the local college age population. The total expenditure on education was 5.6% of GDP 2010. The mean years of schooling of adults over 25 years are 12. Science and Technology in Cape Verde In 2011, Cape Verde devoted just 0.07% of its GDP to research and development, among the lowest rates in West Africa. The Ministry of Higher Education, Science and Culture plans to strengthen the research and academic sectors by placing emphasis on greater mobility, through exchange programs and international cooperation agreements. As part of this strategy, Cape Verde is participating in the Ibero American Academic Mobility Program that expects to mobilize 200,000 academics between 2015 and 2020. Cape Verde counted 25 researchers in 2011, a researcher density of 51 per million inhabitants. The world average was 1,083 per million in 2013. All 25 researchers were working in the government sector in 2011 and one in three were women, 36%.
There was no research being conducted in either medical or agricultural sciences. Of the eight engineers involved in research and development, one was a woman. Three of the five researchers working in natural sciences were women, as were three of the six social scientists and two of the five researchers from the humanities. In 2015, the government was planning to build a cyber island, which would develop and offer services that include software development, computer maintenance and back office operations. Approved in 2013, the Praia Technology Park is a step in this direction. Financed by the African Development Bank, it is expected to be operational by 2018. Crime in Cape Verde Theft and burglary are common in Cape Verde, especially in crowded environments such as marketplaces, festivals, and celebrations. Often the perpetrators of these crimes are gangs of street children. Murders are concentrated in the major population centers of Praia and Mandelo. Culture in Cape Verde The culture of Cape Verde is characterized by a mixture of European and African elements. This is not a sum of two cultures living side by side, but a new culture resulting from an exchange that began in the 15th century. The Cape Verdean case may be situated in the common context of African nations, in which elites, who questioned European racial and cultural superiority and who in some cases undertook a long-armed struggle against European imperialism and national liberation, use the rule of Western codes as the main instrument of internal domination. Cape Verdean's social and cultural patterns are similar to those of rural Portugal. Football games and church activities are typical sources of social interaction and entertainment. The traditional walk around the Praca town square to meet friends is practiced regularly in Cape Verde towns. Sports in Cape Verde The country's most successful sports team is the Cape Verde national basketball team, which won the bronze medal at the FIBA Africa Championship 2007, after beating Egypt in its last game. The country's most well-known player is Walter Taveras, who plays for Real Madrid of Spain. Cape Verde is famous for wave sailing, a type of windsurfing, and kiteboarding. Josh Angulo, a Hawaiian and 2009 PWA Wave World Champion, has done much to promote the archipelago as a windsurfing destination. Mitu Montero, a local kitesurfer, was the 2008 Kite Surfing World Champion in the wave discipline. The Cape Verde national football team, nicknamed either the Tuberos Azus, Blue Sharks, or Creolis, Creoles, is the national team of Cape Verde and is controlled by the Cape Verdean Football Federation. The team has played at two Africa Cup of Nations, in 2013 and 2015. The country has competed at every Summer Olympics since 1996. Thanks for watching this video if you like this video, click on like button. If you want to watch more videos like this, click on the subscription button below, it's free subscription.